if we take a regular pyramid and take it to the ultimate extreme, where we make the base as symmetric and perfectly round as possible, we actually get a, a beautiful cone. So this is an example of a right cone. The base is a perfect circle. And now we define the slant height to be actually uh, the length of a straight line drawn from the very top vertex straight down to uh, any point along the edge of the circle. And so I'll call this L. That's the slant height. By the way, why is it called a right cone? You might be thinking, gee, is there such a thing as a wrong cone? Well, actually, there are such things. Let me just show you what an example of a not right cone is. We don't really call them wrong cones. That was a joke. That was a joke. Please don't write in. Uh, but what you could do is you could take a circular base and then pick a point way out here. And then when you connect it, you get still a cone. You see it? But the point is that if you take this point and drop a, a perpendicular down to the ground, it's not going to be inside the circle in the center. A right cone has the property that its top vertex, if you drop it down, will come right down perpendicularly to the center, hit the center of the circle. That's why it's called a right cone. So it's not that it's correct, it's that it's at a right angle. Okay, now we can actually find all sorts of interesting uh, areas for, this, um, for the surface. The lateral area, so that of course in this case is the, the area of the cone part, like the, the dunce cap part if you want to sort of wear it on your head or like a, or like a birthday hat, right, just the top part, uh, to find that lateral area, that's going to be pi r l. Well, l, of course, is the uh, slant height, and r is just the radius of the base circle right there. And to find the surface area, that's really easy, because all you do is you take the uh, lateral area that we just found, and we add the area of the base. But the area of the base is just the area of a circle, which we know is pi r squared. So really easy to find the surface area once you have the lateral area. Let's take a look at some examples of, uh, of this for right cones, and just see that, in fact, uh, there really isn't too much of a problem. So let's find the lateral area and the surface area for a right cone with radius 4 meters and slant height of 7. Again, you might just want to start by just drawing a little sketch. I like having sketches around because they sort of make it all real for me. Now, I guess you don't really need to. Like if someone says, oh, do we have to do that? No, you don't have to, but I think it's nice. So here we have that the slant height is 7, and we have that the radius is 4. Okay, so let's see if we can now find, first of all, the lateral area. So the lateral area we know to be pi times the radius times the slant height, which is 7. And so I see this answer is 28 pi. And my units are meters, but it's area squared. Okay? And now what about the surface area? Well, the surface area is really no problem at all because I just take the answer I just found, which is the surface area for much of the cone, and I just have to add on the area of the base, which is a circle of radius 4, so that's just going to be 4 squared pi or 16 pi. And so I see the final answer for the surface area is going to be 44 pi. And again, the units are meters squared. So lateral area, surface area for a cone, not a problem at all. Okay, how about this example? Now here we've got a right cone, and we're told that it's right, so that means that this angle is exactly 90 degrees. Remember, that's what it means to be right. And I want us to find the lateral area and the surface area. All right, now the lateral area and the surface area. Well, for the lateral area... I know it is. It's pi r, that's given to be 6, times the slant height. Slant height is 8, right? No. The slant height is not 8. In fact, the slant height is this length right here, which we're not given. So this seems like a little bit of a problem until we realize, wait a minute, this actually is forming a right triangle. Since it's a right cone, this angle is right. And so I've got a right triangle here. I can use Pythagorean theorem to find that hypotenuse. You can do that, or you can be really sneaky like me. And notice that there's a very famous right triangle called the 3-4-5 right triangle. 
that satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. And that's just a three. This is just a three, four, five right triangle multiplied by two. Two times three, two times four, two times five. This works out to be ten feet. Now, if you didn't see that, you can try it and verify that in fact this slant height using the Pythagorean theorem is ten. Anyway, it's ten. So we got ten right there. And so therefore, we see that the lateral area is going to be 60 pi, and my units are feet squared. And what about the surface area? Well, it's no big deal. I take 60 pi, and I add to it the area of the base, which is pi r squared, which in this case is going to be 6 squared, which is 36 pi. And so I see an answer of 96 pi feet squared. So you can see, even when you don't know all the information that you really want, since it's a right cone, we can actually find the right answer.